Ladies and gentlemen, from Birmingham, England, the world's loudest talk show host, Bruce Snow Ghost Russell. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> How's it going, Bruce? Pretty good. How you been? Very groovy, baby. Just very groovy. We had a lot of good feedback about the first episode of the show. No, we did. What, what, was your, what were you telling me that would happen if people watched that show? To be, to be, once you watch the show, you be, you, uh, you, you see your, your future a whole lot brighter and come out of, out of the depths of, the, of your shadow. First, there was a snow ghost on top of a silver mountain. Now that ghost is your community host. A snow ghost wants to get the most out of you. Cause a better world begins with you. Well, today, you know what we're going to be talking about? Aliens. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking about these people who claim to be in town to see aliens, to see if aliens are going to land at the airport in Worcester. And I have to say, I totally don't believe any of these people. I think this is all fiction. I think it's all a hoax. You think it's all a hoax? Yeah. Well, perhaps we can expose the hoax. What's behind this, Bruce? What's behind this piece of wood? I think it's our special gift for today's guest. Yes. Presented by our sponsor, Happy Birthday, Mike Leslie. That's right. There's, there's a blue tiger. No, not the blue tiger. There's, another, there's, there's something behind this piece of wood. Not the blue tiger. The blue tiger is also provided by our sponsor. But it's not a gift. We're not going to give it to the guest. We're going to hang on to it. Okay. Are you ready for the show? Yes. Anything else to say in, in an introduction about aliens? Yeah, I just got one thing to say. What's that? About aliens. What on earth ails you? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and introduce the guest. So we're talking to Michael. On my, on my left, we got Mike from his, his Scranton. And we're going to talk about uh, with him about... Uh, the aliens are supposed to be coming to Worcester today. So I'm pleased to be here, Bruce. Thanks a lot. Hey, we are. My pleasure. So, Michael, you come from Pennsylvania because you're you think that there could be an alien landing at the airport. Yeah, the Worcester Airport is a, a very good location for this um, okay. on the Eastern Seaboard. No, this is this is something I've only heard about for a few months. The idea that there's people who are coming into the city, um, and you know, to, to see if it, to see these aliens. To wait at the airport to sort of have an ongoing vigil. Alien enthusiasts? I don't know uh, what you would call yourselves. Alien enthusiasts, alien fans, some of our detractors like to call us alien fanatics, but that's another term for a lot of enthusiasm. And, and uh, we like to think of ourselves as alien scholars. In the, the lack of a lot of physical evidence, we can't be too overly scholastic about it, but uh, we do attempt to study our profession as well as we can. Okay. So how long, how long is this, was this uh, thing going on? Well, if you really want to look back, the first mentions of aliens and UFOs are found in the Old Testament. Um, Ezekiel and the wheel. Of okay. course, they saw the fiery wheel up in the air. Are those uh, you know angels or visitors from another planet? We're not really sure. But we do feel that there's a lot of history about aliens. Now, visiting the aliens in Worcester, that's another matter. Yeah, I don't think that this city has a lot of history as far as as far as people from space. I think it dates back to about June of last year. Okay. That people have gotten excited about the Worcester Airport. Before that, they were more up in framing him. <laughs> Do you think it's helpful that the airport gets so little use? Do you think a busier airport would drive away aliens? Well, you've got, when the aliens are coming in for a landing pattern, you don't want a lot of, you know, planes zooming in and over the top of everybody. You can have a crash, a collision, the, there's... UFO parts all over the place, then you've got the military coming in and souvenir hunters, and that's just, that's, that's bad for tourism. And NASA. Yeah, exactly. So you want a place a little bit quieter, a little bit calmer, good economics, good tourism, you know, good, good social atmosphere, but not, not too much traffic. And that's what the aliens are looking, that's the theory of what these, what these visitors from outer space are looking for. Well, I mean, if you've got a hyper-advanced 
interstellar civilization that can build these super UFOs, are, are you really looking for raw materials or an industrial center? You know, you've got all of that. These people are coming here for our culture. We've got nightlife, we've got theater, we've got community television. Why else wouldn't they want to be in Worcester? And plus you got the snow ghost too. And the snow ghost show. Well, that, that all wraps up into it. I mean, that's, that's, that's what brought me here. So. <laughs> do you think it could be the show? Well, if, let me tell you, if you do find some you know, visitors, some ETs, refer them to us because I think Bruce would like to talk to them. Do you, do you really think that you'd have room to visit them on your, your show schedule? I mean, yeah, I yeah. It's rather possibly crowded. Possibly because, I, I mean, wanna... I like to get autographs and say, you know something? I'm going to say, hey, people, and guess what? I got, I just I got an autograph of uh, a UFO. They're gonna say what? I said the living proof right here. That's true. That could be useful. That, that, <laughs> that that's a good point. That'll be, you, the, that'll be the proof. People will say, I don't believe you saw a UFO. You're like, no, they have an I have a signature right here. I mean, I've heard of. I mean, I've heard of the the, the band uh, UFO. So why not UFO from another from another from another another planet? I mean, because you brought up an interesting point here. I mean, I heard this on the telly a few months back. Probably beginning of sometime after the first of the year, some woman says claiming she was out in her backyard and she saw something flying through the sky. It had some kind of like UFO behind it or something. So, you know, somewhere's in New Hampshire. I forget. I didn't sightings. I mean, people. People see. Did she know what it was? Did she know what no, she, she saw? Didn't. She didn't. It was unidentified. Oh, right. That's a UFO. Well, there's a lot of UFOs. The question is, are these extraterrestrial well, intelligences? I don't really know if there's a lot of UFOs. Unidentified flying objects? Well, let's well, say you you've got a... If you see something, like, I'm like, what is that? I, probably a jet, but I don't that's know if true, jets but to are, know are, are there I'm. one? Are there is more than unidentified? one? unidentified? To me, it's unidentified, so is that Well, UFO? yes, that's well, true. It's an unidentified flying object. Yeah. But is there one, or is there more than one? Well... Let's say you have a piece of rope, Mike, and, and you yeah. wrap this rope around your body. Now, you're looking at it. How many, I mean, you're going to look at the front of it. I mean, right. how many pieces of rope are there? You've got, you know, a, a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, or right. is it just one rope? Well, it's one rope that you're just seeing multiple times. In the same way, there might only be one UFO, but we're seeing it, you know, coming through simultaneously in different time streams or different points. But just one UFO. So the UFO, the craft, the, the extraterrestrial craft is like a multi-dimensional, it in, exists in these higher dimensions and so it's, when it's resolved in... It, it, yes, exactly. Coming through in a different, different time stream and different parts that to us, simple, you know, Earth people in three dimensions and, and a fourth dimensional time stream, we only perceive, we perceive it as multiple UFOs, but it's just one vehicle. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Have you guys seen anything? Have you seen any manifestations or whatever at the airport so far this year? Um, I personally haven't, but uh, there have been reports of other people seeing things that they weren't really sure of what they saw, so that was unidentified. Have you, have you seen anything, Bruce? Have, have you been looking up up in the skies lately? I haven't really seen this as a really out of, out of ordinary, but I mean, I got a quick question for you. I mean, uh, do UFOs, I mean, does, you heard the, the, thing, the things about the crop circles? Crop circles. Does, does that have anything to do with UFOs and stuff, or? Well, there, there has been a, uh, a team out in England that, that has admitted to making the crop circles themselves. So, uh, so there, there's a lot of skepticism of whether or not the UFOs would be making them. I haven't personally seen a UFO making the crop circles, so I, I have no proof that they make them. Yeah, I heard the same thing here in the U.S. that there were somebody, somebody saw somewhere on their backyard or something too. Um, I think it was like a Vegas or somewhere's out there. I'm not absolutely sure, but that's what I've heard. Well, but personally, you know, I, I tend to think of the crop circles as sort of like graffiti or tagging, where yeah. the, the UFOs sort of come in and, and leave their mark, you know, like, you know, I was here, something like that. So it, it, it's a quite likely scenario. And it's kind of like saying to, to right now, kind of like writing your, your name on the wall and saying, I was here. Exactly. Oh, this person was here. Mm -hmm. Only with graffiti. more loopy, organic, geometric components. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like when you look into a, uh, going into a night doctor and you look through all these like f funny like circles and stuff and you're seeing, it's kind of like that too almost, right? Yeah, or, or if you like give the graffiti artists a bunch of protractors and rulers, a part right. of graffiti would look a lot more like that than it does. All was. right. All right. Well, Michael, thanks for coming on uh, the Snow Ghost. You're quite welcome. Show. And thank you for coming down. It was a pleasure. 
To contact the Snow Ghost Community Show, email thesnowghost at gmail.com or leave a comment on our blog at wccatv.com slash snowghost. To leave a voice message that we can play on the show, call 508-471-3897. Our next guest is Anne Marie, who's also from Scranton. Ashland, actually, but I'm living in Scranton. Well, I'm still used to saying Scranton, so, you know. Okay, that'll do then. Or sometimes you say Scrampton. Scrampton. Like, like Hampton. All right. Nice. We're like, a, we're like a real ham. <laughs> <laughs> Scranton ham. So you're, you're also in town as part of the people at the airport. Yes. I am. Well, it's, it's at least nice to see something going on at the airport. It time. is, yeah. It's you know bringing some life to the airport. Is it a good group of people up there? Yeah, they're pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Is this sort of the same? Is there like a? Is this like the Grateful Dead that there's like a group of people who sort of go around the country doing this, or are people more geographically? I think more geographic. They're more than focused, anything. like my neighborhood UFO landing spot. Yes. They're kind of focused on that kind of a thing. Yes. They're very proud of their neighborhood. Neighborhood. Okay. UFO watching. There's a local pride. Use a lot of New Englanders? Yeah, I would say a lot of New Englanders. Not, not too many people from overseas, though? No, they're, they tend to stay overseas. They have their own, <laughs> they have their own thing going on. <laughs> they do. They're, <laughs> little, they're a little busy to come to New England. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Bruce, do you have any more thoughts on aliens? You know, I'm just... Does anybody seen any like UFOs in Scrampton or? I see them almost every day. Do you? Yes. What's your first thought when you see one like that in the sky or? Oh, there's another one. It's just sort of like whatever. Was he fair about it at this point? Yeah. So there's a, really, I had no idea that there was like a frequent sightings of stuff in Scranton. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say they're always up in the air. I'd say there's lots of <laughs> unidentified objects. Okay. So, Bruce, what have been your experiences of sightings of UFOs? I really haven't seen one, but I've occasionally like uh, watched the thing they talk about on the uh, Travel Channel. They talk about the crop circles and things like that. And then I've also seen uh, the sightings on the, that used to be on sci-fi, but the, they talk about different uh, sightings and UFOs and that sort of stuff. But What's your understanding of the agenda behind, you know, visitors from other planets? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, if they, if, let's say that these aliens did land in Scranton, or not in Scranton, in Worcester, the mothership came down at the airport. What do you think they would be all about? Why would they be here, based on what you know? I think there are a lot of questions, a lot of people Questions that I think, or don't know that this government here has has a lot to do with the uh, UFOs, and I think they try to want to keep things to keep people of not knowing the truth about it. So you think it's some some sort of government cover up going on here? Yeah, big big time. Okay. Anne Marie, what's your what's your thinking about them? About the government covering it up? This is something I mostly know from watching the X-Files, so I'm not a big UFO expert or anything. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the government wants to cut, cover this up. What would be the idea? Why would the government... Because it's unknown, and I think people might be scared. Okay. I guess I'm just thinking, well, I guess, like, I, guess I think about stuff like the atomic bomb, for example, for example which is like a pretty freaky thing. And I guess, you, I guess once you blow up a couple of cities in Japan, it's hard to keep that quiet. Mm, they but tried to cover that up too, though, didn't they? When it first happened? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. My, my impression was always that the reason that, you know, that they dropped the atomic bomb on Japan, even though the Japanese were ready to surrender, is because they wanted to demonstrate it to Stalin, to let him know what we had, to let the world know what we had. Um, but that's the kind of thing I think that, I don't know, I, I, I guess I think that finding out about aliens would be similar to finding out about the atomic bomb. And people handled finding out about the atomic bomb. It was a pretty crazy number of decades there. There's a lot of fear, a lot of, you know, people building bomb shelters and a certain amount of panic and paranoia. Yes. 
but it wasn't like society collapsed either here or in the Soviet Union. You know, people sort of dealt with it and moved on with their lives. You know, it was always a subject of contention. I wonder if, mm. I wonder if people finding out about aliens is the same way. There might be some surprise at first, but then I'm sure there would be other people who would say, yeah, told you so. Well, yeah, because like you guys are fairly convinced that there's visitors from another planet. Fairly. And most of the alien buffs I've met are not crazy. They're not, you know, they're not causing, or at least they're not causing the breakdown of society. They're not losing, you know, they're able to like get up and go to work the next morning after they see a UFO, right? Sometimes. Sometimes you're up all night. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's not like, I guess it's not like their life ends. It's not like their ability to participate yeah, in society it, ends. It's like a hobby, but more serious than a hobby. Yeah. Well, I guess what I'm thinking, though, is like, if, the, if there was, let's say there was UFOs coming down, there was ETs coming down, mm -hmm. and the government let people know about that, and they had been worried about widespread panic, but I think if they let people know, it would just be kind of like, everybody would just be kind of like the UFO buffs are, that they would just say, well... Huh, it's like an interesting new part of the lo of life, and it's certainly a sort of concern and maybe fear, but it's not like, it's not like I have a nervous breakdown. Panic. Exactly. It's not yeah. like I'm going to go around like attacking my neighbor with an axe just because I know that there's... Because <laughs> I don't know what this widespread panic is supposed to be. I mean, I well, guess... Well, it I've depends never... on if the aliens are friendly or not, or if you agitate them. You don't want to agitate them, because then there could be, be trouble. So you think maybe the government is covering up UFOs because the UFOs don't want to be known? as being out there. Yes, that's my theory. So it's just kind of like, oh, okay. It's kind of as, as a courtesy to them. Yeah, I think so. Because mm. we don't know exactly how they'll react. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I hope that I hope that shows like this that are attempting to out them don't, you know, cause us any trouble. I think you're, you're going about it in a positive way. So I don't think it'll cause much trouble. Do you think that the, do you think, what do you think the agenda behind the aliens is? Do you think that they're, you I know? I think it's curiosity. Okay. Maybe boredom. Boredom on their planets. Okay. And just coming here to see what else is out yeah. there. See, it's like, like traveling, see if there's more, and anything interesting to do. It's like going to a foreign country. Oh, well, thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're not a It's problem. been enlightening. We should give her a special gift provided by our sponsor, Happy Birthday, Mike Lesnar. Yeah, you know, we have a, gift, have a special gift for you for, from our special uh, sponsor from uh, Happy Birthday, Mike Leslie. Oh, a deer. A female deer. There you go. Actually, I think it's a male deer. It I has think you're right. I don't know. I study UFOs. <laughs> well, thanks for being on the show. You're welcome. Bruce, do you have any final thoughts for the people of the city of Worcester? Uh, one last thing, it's, I think it's a uh, rumor that's trying to cover up the government, trying to cover up the, uh, the UFOs and things. It's like, they don't want to take, they don't want to take, uh, you know, it's kind of like them uh, blaming rock and roll for like the, the, the failure of spaceship shuttle and you know, this is like... Wait, they blame rock and roll for what? The, the, the failure of the spaceship, sh the spaceship shuttle and they don't want to <laughs> take any blame for that, so you know... Well, 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 when you're end it there. Wait, say that again? I said, well, we'll end it there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Give me advice for the people of Worcester for this week. Just live the dream, baby. Whatever, 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 whatever you see coming for you, just, just pretend it's not there. First, there was a snow ghost on top of a silver mountain. Night ghost is your community host. A snow ghost wants to get the most out of you. Cause a better world begins with you.